Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sanja Karasman and uh, welcome everybody, all my followers and those who are not my followers. So if you know me, if you watch my uh, channel, if you are one of the followers, then you probably know this, that I'm not a person who usually speaks on uh, tutorials because I like to be focused on my work and not to expose myself that much. But uh, during this uh, quarantine, I was uh, alone at home a lot of time and today is my birthday, so that's why I decided to make a live party and, uh, and share my present with you. So I didn't get any present yet, but I'm going to share a present with my audience. Um, so today I'm going to do one of the haircuts that is actually one of the most popular on my channel and it's a pixie haircut. So I made a poll a few days ago and uh, also most of my followers said that want to see a pixie haircut so I'm gonna do just that. Um, and today I'm gonna explain every part of the haircut. So I don't have a line model, I have this uh, gorgeous doll and I hope uh, that the, the, the final result will turn out as I want it. So I do not prefer to work with dolls but uh, anyway I can show you the, te the techniques that I'm usually doing on the live models and I will try to explain it as simple as possible because I know that a lot of that most of the people say that this is something they like about my channel what is and it's that that most of the haircuts that I do they're really simple to understand so I'm just gonna start with the haircuts and so this is the first live that I'm doing on the YouTube so if you're gonna have any questions just please write it down and I will try to answer to everybody and also please uh, write down from which country you are coming because I would like to know uh, from uh, where, where are you from? Okay. So I have a doll and usually before I do the, the haircut, I always check the shape of the head. So if you watch my tutorials, you will notice that I don't have complicated sectioning. When I do the haircut, for me, it's really important to do it as simple as possible and especially because I'm explaining to a hairdressers, I don't like to make too many techniques. So there is actually one, one sectioning that I usually do on most of the haircuts, which always works. So it changes according to the, the head shape, but most of the time it's really simple. So I'm going to do a pixie cut which will be shorter in the bottom, so actually it will be a little bit a disconnected haircut and longer on the top, so she will have a longer fringe. And because she doesn't have a natural uh, curl kick like most of the people do, I will just see in the end how I, how I dry the hair, so actually it could be um, the, the parting won't be visible, she will have it on the both sides. But like I said, you can change it according to your customer's shape. So my first basic section it's on the side. I usually start in the front and that's why I will also start with the front sectioning. So if you don't know on which, on which size, like uh, on uh, which um, level you have to make the section, the most simple way is to find the parietal bone. So once, once you find these bones, bones on the side, usually the section uh, lies on these bones. Okay, so this will be my first section and I will make it also on the other side. So the reason why I'm doing this section on parietal bone, it's, really, it, it's a really logical and simple uh, reason. So because there where it's a bone, you actually create a corner. So from this point where you have a corner or where you have a bone, all the hair usually tends to, to grow toward downwards. And all the hair from here usually start to turn towards front. So if you make a section which is uh, lower than the parietal bone, you can always have that, um, I don't know how to say it, like the hair that it's going out from the head. And if you do it too high, usually the curl kick will also do that. And you don't want that hair, uh, like uh, you don't want to have that small hair which is like going away from the head. So doing the section on the parietal bone, it's actually the best and universal uh, sectioning for almost every head that you have. And this can work like for every pixie and also for every classic short haircut. Okay, so in the back, I'm just gonna make like a, a elongated shape. So I will just elongate this section and I will make a small triangular shape. 
and it will be symmetrical on both sides. Okay, so I'm, do I'm doing it without a mirror and trying to show it in the camera, so sometimes it can happen that it's a little bit asymmetrical, but I will, I will check it. Okay, so the reason why I'm doing the V shape actually, it's also really simple. So most of the time, always, you have a curl kick, like the, the cow lick on the back. And if you want to avoid um, that you cut this part too short, the best way is to make a v, v shape and you leave it until the end. So everything below the section, so below the variable bone and below this V shape, it will be short. And you can always keep this part longer. Or in the end, if uh, the hair growth is really good, you can just connect it with the bottom. So for now, I will leave it on the top, I will leave it longer. But like I said, this is something that you can manage during your haircut. And also on the other side, again, we separate the section on the parietal bone. So this is really simple sectioning that you can usually see, uh, not only on my haircuts, but I believe also on other colleagues' haircuts. But there is a reason why I do it. So when you do something, when you cut hair, you should know why you do it. And I hope that now you will get all the answers um, that you usually don't get in my videos, because like I said, I don't talk too much. Okay, so I will just remove this part and I will start with the haircut. I usually start in the front because I want to create a rounded shape. So it's really important where you stand. So if you are doing a rounded shape, it means that we follow the head, the, sh the shape of the head. And it means that I follow it not with my hands, not only with my hands, but also with my body. So I always have to move around. So I will try to do that um, also that is visible for you because when you follow the head shape, you always have to move the body with each section. So most of the time I would be probably, the, if I want to stay correctly, I would probably be in the front of the camera, but I don't want to do that. So I will just try to move so that you can also see it. Okay, my first section, it will be a little bit diagonal because if the head is rounded, I have to follow that roundness. So I usually start with the, uh, with the diagonal sections. I think it's better that I go from this side. Okay, so now I will stay in the front. So this is something that is opposite uh, from the bob haircut, because if you do a bob haircut, bob haircut is usually shorter in the back and longer in the front. This is actually the triangular uh, shape, but we use, usually use triangular shape when we are creating a bob haircut. Okay, so now when I'm doing the rounded shape, which is usually shorter in the front and longer in the back, it means that I have to stay in the front and I have to um, over direct all the hair towards front. So I won't do like total over direction, but I will over direct every next section to the previous. So it means that I will move slowly around the head and I will create this uh, rounded shape. Okay, so I don't wanna go with too short pixie, um, especially because this is a doll and you know how the, how the growth uh, of the hair is on the doll and I want to make, uh, make it softer. So it doesn't matter if you do like really short, even if you do the scissor over comb or just remove this part with the clipper, the section can be the same. So if you want to do like more feminine haircut, more um, like girly pixie, you can, you can make the same shape, the same sectioning, but you just leave all the hair longer. Okay, so now when I start, I over direct the hair to the front and I will just start with my first section and just see the length. Okay, I think this will be okay, maybe just a little bit shorter. So I actually never did a pixie on the doll, so this will be interesting to see how it, how it will turn out. But you know, today when we are all in quarantine, <laughs> we can't have real models until the next week when we start working. So for now, I'm going to do it like that. Okay, so the next section, it's the same as previous. It's a little bit diagonal. And like I said before, I turn, uh, I over direct every section to the previous, but I shouldn't put my hand too low because if I do it too low, I will have a really, really heavy shape. 
So what I want to do, I want to create like a soft graduation. So that's why I lift the fingers a little bit higher every time. But it's still graduation because my fingers are always below the section. So this is one way how to control are you doing a graduation or are you doing layers. So for instance, if I would take the section and lift it higher than the section is, it means that I will have a layers because the fingers are above the section. And if I put the fingers below the section, then I will have graduation. So this is a really logical approach, especially if you are a beginner and if you are not sure how much you should lift the fingers. So always think like that. Uh, just check where your section is and uh, check where your fingers are. Okay, and I will just keep moving around the head. And as you can see now, I will connect with the back. So all the sections are diagonal, diagonal, and I go always around the head. So because this section now becomes longer, I have to turn around the head with my body. And I have to be careful now because if I over direct this part towards front, I will have too long in the back. So we, I have to keep in mind that I want a round, rounded form. So it means that I move around the head with my body just to create this part in the back uh, short enough because I don't want to keep it too long. So I move with my body and with my fingers and with my comb around the head. And even if it now stays longer, it doesn't matter because this is something that I will that I will personalize later. So first now I'm doing the like the basic shape and then later I will do the outline. Okay, so the sections are always repeating. I'm taking the new one and I always follow the previous one. So I always over direct it to the previous but I always lift it a little bit higher. And when, I, when I'm in the back, I always have to move my body. So this is something that I shouldn't forget. So we always move with our body. Because most of the time, um, the problem happens, like if you have a mistake in your haircut and you don't know how to find it, usually it happens because of the position of uh, body posture. So this is something that um, when you are looking the videos on YouTube uh, that you can't find out actually because most of the time the camera is focused on the head and on the sections and rare, rarely someone explains the, the body position. So the body is really important partner when doing the haircut. So with every haircut, with every technique, we should always know where to stand and uh, how to move around the head. So I always lift a little bit from the previous and I always check where is my section, my previous section. Okay, so I just keep cutting diagonally. And I always move around the head with my body. And my fingers are always a little bit below the section. So I shouldn't lift it too high and I shouldn't um, go too low with the fingers. So guys, please, if you have any questions or comments, write them down. And also you can tell me where you're coming from. I know that most of my followers are from USA. So I know it's really early now in the morning, somewhere in California probably, around 8 o'clock. Here it's 5 in the afternoon. Um, but anyway, I will save this video and everybody can see it later.
it. So I just keep moving around. Like I said, this will be one soft version of a pixie, a little bit longer, not too short. Because usually I do a really short pixies on the on my channel. But I have a lot of girls who like to have a short hair and we always go as short as possible. And this is something that I will cut later, so I don't uh, bother now over this lower part. And as you can see now, when I'm continuing with my diagonal section, what happens? My section from the right side, it started to go across the left side. So this is the point where, my, where, where the hair will connect when I start to cut in the left side. So this is something that always happened. And actually I will have like a cross sections in the back um, if I measure the both sides together. But I still keep moving around the head. So the section should always be parallel with my body. So this is how I keep control when doing the rounded form. Okay, so now I'm finished with the first side. I will go to the other. And like I said, this is something that I will cut later and personalize uh, when I dry this part. So usually when I do the pixie haircut, I always do it in the um, two segments. So the first segment is the one where I cut below the parietal bone and the other is on the top. And uh, what I usually do, I always finish this bottom part. I always dry the hair, personalize it, and then I move to the front. Because once when you have uh, the base, because this is the base for me, like in the haircut, even if this stays longer, even if a customer don't want to cut it shorter, you can leave it longer and it will stay, still stay good. It will still look good. Because when you have the base good, everything on the top, it will also be okay. Now, I start from the other side and I keep it, and I do it the same as I did in the beginning. So now I will just check a little bit the length on the left side. And I have to be careful because this, this part the first part of the head, it's almost dry, so I should be careful that I don't cut this one too short because the hair always tends to jump when it's dry. Okay, a little bit shorter, I almost got it. So my sections are diagonal and I will continue to do it in the same way like I did on the first side. So I always move with each section and I always lift a little bit. So if I over direct the hair too much toward fronts, I will have like a really heavy shape and I don't want to do that. I want to have like a nice soft pixie shape. So from this side, it can be a little bit uh, heavier to do it because now my elbow goes really high. So this is also one more thing to be careful when you are doing um, the other side. Because if you don't know how to cut with both hands, which I don't think any hairdresser can do, it's really hard because you change the position of your hands. So in order to achieve the same angle when you cut on the left side of the customer here the elbow should go really higher because if your elbow is too low automatically all the hair will go lower and you will change the angle that you are that you are cutting so always keep the elbow really high to keep it in the same uh to keep the ba balance so i see that it's a little bit too long so i just need to shorten it a little bit more But this is just a minimum, like a few millimeters longer. 
So every time when you check the size, always check with each section just uh, to keep the balance in the haircut. Um, because once when you have like over five millimeter the other side longer, then you should repeat the haircut. On, then you should start from the beginning. So everything that is like below five millimeter, you can uh, just remove with the cross checking. But everything that is longer, you should start with the cutting sectioning from the beginning. So don't leave any excess length for the later because later it's always too late. So it's easier to manage and to control the hair during the sectioning, during the sections. So now when I move here, I go around the head. sections are always a little bit diagonal and now when I keep uh, continue going towards the neck what will happen because here I already cut the hair because when I when I started with the right side I had these diagonal sections that were across the other side so I will just connect with them So the only good thing when working with a doll, it's not me that I'm moving, it's actually she. <laughs> so instead of moving around her, I just uh, keep turning around the doll. So now I can see the section from the left side and the section from the right side. So and I, and I see that they are on the same length, which is good, so it means that my shape will connect. Keep going around and I always think when on this side I always have to lift my elbow so this is something that you shouldn't forget when you do it so when you're doing the haircut there is actually a lot of things to think about not just the sections and the angle but also the position of the body like where are you standing how are your hands how do you hold your hands um, because everything affects the haircut. Oh, okay, so uh, can, can you read it? So I have my colleague here, so maybe she can read it, uh, the comments, mm -hmm. because it feels like I'm speaking to myself all the time. Um, so from where uh, are my followers? Um, who's who's watching from, me now? From Georgia, from India. Oh, wow, hi India. Uh, this is great. Germany, uh, London, uh, Australia. Australia, mm -hmm. everybody are awake now. <laughs> It's really it's, cool. It's one in, in the morning in Australia. Guys, you don't know what to do, go sleep. <laughs> um, you have uh, Federico from Italia. Ah, ciao Federico. <laughs> in Croatia. Croatia, ciao Hrvatska. It's always ciao, ciao, no matter where are you from. <laughs> Malta. Malta, wow. So I've been to USA, California. I haven't been to Australia, but I really want to go, so I hope maybe not next year, but probably in two years we have some plans, so maybe it will work out. As soon as we can go out of the, the quarantine, we'll go everywhere. 
Okay, so now when I finished with this side, I think it's a little bit longer, but I will uh, remove the, this uh, ex excess weight. So now you can see that I have like a V shape. So actually it, uh, it imitates the section that I created. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna make a cross check on the middle because I wanna remove this, um, uh, the, the angle that I have on the middle. So I'm just gonna take a horizontal section, bring them up and just remove this, the angle on the middle. So like I said, the best way is to do it if you stay in the middle, but I don't want to turn around the back. And this is how, this is how I control uh, the length of my shape. Here I have a little bit more. It was a leg section that I didn't include in the haircut, but I still can manage it. So what, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to make a cross check, but it's actually really simple. So my cross check will actually be the, the continuance of the first part. So I'm going to cross, cross check a left side the same way as I cut at the right side. So my sections from the right side, they were diagonal and I will just keep move diagonally on the left side. And this is how I will remove the excess weight and uh, check if there is anything a little bit longer. So I have a little bit, a little bit more weight here on the left side and I will remove that really simple. So you shouldn't worry if you have like two millimeters too long, you just have to find a way how to remove it, okay? So I usually, even if I have like seminars or something, you know, when people have problems, I always say there isn't a problem, there are only solutions. So even if you, the only problem is when you don't know how to solve something. So as long as you can find a way to solve something, it's always good. And uh, when you don't know how to solve something, then, then the problem happens. That side. And now I lift it up. So this is just like two, three millimeters longer. Because a lot of people got stressed when they see that something it's not perfect at first, but it shouldn't be. You always have time to fix it. So um, don't get nervous if something is not right away as you want it to be. And now I can see that the shape becomes as I want it to be. So this is like just a few millimeters that I had to remove from this side. But th like I said, this is, these are the things that usually happen and uh, uh, you're not going to see it always on the YouTube uh, channel, on, on YouTube videos, because even, even if I edit my videos, I just remove the things that, um, that seems to me like unnecessary. So, but that's why it's good to watch the live videos, because you can find everything, how it looks like in live from the, from the first moment. Okay, so now I see that my, that my sides are the same. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to dry the hair. And then I'm going to personalize this thing because this part I don't like. So I'm just going to cut it shorter. But this is my basic shape uh, that I have. And then I'm going to leave this longer. Indonesia. Indonesia. Azerbaijan. Oh my God. I would like... I would like to say hello in each language, but I have no idea which languages are there. <laughs> you know Romanian? Romanian? Yeah, you can say hi to Romanian. Uh, it's same in Italian, buonasera. <laughs> I think so, but it's the same. I have a lot of great colleagues in Romania. I like to go to Romania. So uh, even like if I explain to people about Romania, they are always surprised because they didn't expect it to be so cool. So Romania for me, it's like one of my favorite countries because especially the team that I work with, they're like the best team. And they're all, everybody, they are so polite. We always have fun. They are so nice and they're really good hairdressers. So what I'm most ex um, uh, surprised about is how much they invest in, the, in education. So this is something that was like really a discovery to me. I, all, I actually felt like really embarrassed when I came first time because they were all like high level, high class. And I was just like, 
in some jeans, you know, like looking uh, like it does, like it doesn't matter. And they were all like polished. And I was like, oh, I should invest a little bit more time in how I look, you know. But it doesn't matter because in the end we got along, and uh, like I have really good time in Romania. Okay, so when drying the hair, I usually use this um, this kind of a brush. I forgot the name of it, but it's a little bit rounded, so it gives you a natural shape when you dry the hair. So it doesn't matter if you like have a little bit wavy hair or just a straight, it will help you to stretch the hair, so the hair will be smooth and you will have the natural volume because you don't want to make the hair, the hair too flat. You want to keep it um, in the natural, uh, you want to dry it as naturally as possible. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, because I wanna remove this part, because it bothers me a lot now, but this is the doll, you know, it doesn't work always the same as uh, it works on the, on the real head. Okay, so I'm just gonna change my angle here. So this is something that uh, you can change during the haircut, but most of the haircuts when you do, you have to know, um, like I would say 80% of what your goal is, because other 20%, they always depend on the hair shape, the the quality of the hair and everything so you can uh, you can improvise a little bit on the way but it's important to have like one goal um, that you're sure about it and uh, the other things can be per personalized during the haircut so what I'm gonna do now because I want to remove that I will just go with a little bit more layers in here and this is really simple I will just start with ver vertical sections and I will make more graduated shape. So I want to keep this length on the top and I want to remove this length on the bottom. So what I'm doing now, I'm leaving this length, I shouldn't cut it, so this length it's like my guideline and I'm doing the vertical sections. I hope that you can see it good on the camera. So this is the length that I keep and I cut everything below. And now, my um, position of the hand changes. So when I take the section, and when I cut it on the top, my hand is far away from the scalp. And when I go towards down, my hand is uh, placed on the skin, on the neck. So this is how you have control over the length that you are creating because it's really hard to do that with the fingers. So you just have to place your hand, like it should lay down on the customer's neck. And you can see right away that this is shorter. So this is what I wanted to achieve. And I'm keeping the same length here. So I don't want to change my shape of the haircut. I just want to change the shape of the outline. So this is the one approach how you can um, do it in your salon. Because most of the hairdressers, when they start to cut the short hair, they usually start in the back. But if you start in the back, you can really fast, you can cut too much. And by the time when you reach the front, it can be just too short, you know. Or you can have like holes in here, which I don't prefer. So when I do the short hair, I usually start from the front because I want to I wanna have my focus here. So where you want to have the focus, there is the part where you should start usually. And uh, in the back, I want it shorter, so this is how I managed to do it now. So I started in the front, 
um, created my basic shape, which is this like nice rounded graduation. And now I'm just removing um, this length on the neck, which I don't like, and I do it with vertical sections. So I use vertical sections when I have too much weight because it helps me to remove that weight. But anyways, I'm still doing the graduation, but it's much softer than it was in the beginning. So I always keep the length on the top and I just remove this on the neck. And already you can see it looks much better. So I keep this length um, so below the parietal bone and I just remove this weight. And you can see that I have like a really nice rounded shape and the perfect uh, head shape. Now I will go from the other side. So I just keep continue going vertically. So this side it's usually a little bit heavier because again my elbow should be really high and I have like other um, angle from where I'm gonna cut the hair so this hand will go like really really low again I have to keep this length on the top and I just cut this part on the bottom So even if you want, you can do it uh, this part uh, when the hair is wet because it's a little bit easier to control the hair when it's wet. Uh, but if you feel that you have a good control over any hair that you are working with, then you can also do it on the dry hair. So some of the things I prefer to do on the wet hair, which is a basic sh uh, cutting shape that I create, but I have to like do these finies or to see the natural fall of the hair and work with it, then I usually do it on the dry hair. Because a lot of things you won't see until the hair is dry. So, um, like this, what I did now. So I waited to dry it and to see how actually it looks like. So now I remove this excess weight and I'm going to just make everything a little bit more uh, finer. So I'm just going to use the point cut to make it a little bit lighter. But this is my basic shape that I'm working with. And I'm going to again start in the front like I did with the haircut. I'm going to take the same sections and just make them a little bit finer. So when you're thinning the hair, uh, it's important to not destroy the shape that you created. So when I'm doing the point cut, I should be careful that I take the same sections as I did during the haircut. And I have to see this like strong shape, strong outline. Because if you just grab the hair like anywhere, like if you don't see the strong outline, then you don't do the, the, the point cut. So you should have like a really clean shape as you did cut it before and just make it a little bit finer okay so i don't want to kill the shape i don't want to remove the shape i want to still keep it i just want to make it a little bit finer south america saying hi south america hi south america <laughs> which country brazil and oh, brazil. colombia before i think so i actually learned portuguese I'll, a few years ago, but I forgot everything. Uh, I just, I think I know how to say what my name is. And I think it's something like, Eu chamo me Salia. <laughs> but I'm not sure that's correct. Uh, that's uh, correct. So you can write it down how to say. So Brazil is also one country where I haven't been, but I noticed I have uh, a lot of followers, so thank you everybody for following me. I really appreciate it. 
maybe I uh, maybe I go once to South America. Who knows? Well, you have people asking where you're from. I'm. I never know what to say. So I'm from Croatia originally, but I live ten years in Slovenia now, and that is in Europe. So a lot of people don't know where it is. Um, I live in Slovenia for 10 years now, so I think now it's the time to say that I'm from Slovenia. <laughs> but my mother would kill me if she heard that, probably. Yes, it's funny because when I read the comments on the YouTube, you know, I got a lot of people asking me, can I get an appointment at the haircut? I'm like, sure, where are you from? Like, I'm from USA. Yeah, just come in Europe and I will do the haircut. Um, so it's really interesting. Um, but you can see it on my prof profile. I think it says where I'm from. So, but now, now you know it because I said it. So I'm, I'm from Croatia, but I live in Slovenia. Slovenia is my second home. Now I'm gonna do the point cut on the other side too. So this is something that you do. Um, visually so you have to follow the shape and you have to check like how much weight you have how much weight you want to remove because it's really important especially when you do the graduation that you don't do too much of a point cut because you don't want to remove the weight that you created because when you're doing the graduation it means that you are creating actually the weight that you are creating this heavier shape on the haircut and i like to do the graduation and this is what the reason why i like to do the short hair because when you do the short hair, especially with the graduated shape, you can always see, you can actually always see the shape um, that you're creating when the hair is wet. And when you do that with the, like when you do the longer hair, you don't see the shape until you dry it. So during the, when you do the, the short haircut, for me it's always like much better. I prefer to do the short haircuts. I'm just going to go now from the other side so you can see. So it's important when you do the point cut that you always have like this strong line outline during the haircut. So don't take the sections like anywhere. Your sections should always be uh, the same as they were during the, hair, during the cutting. Okay, and now in the middle, what I can do, I can just take the sections on my comb and work towards up. I can't wait for quarantine to end so I can work with real models. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna just personalize these parts and I'm gonna do like a soft slight cutting because I wanna make this a little bit softer than it is. So when doing the pixie cut, it's actually um, one of the most fun haircuts because you don't always have to do it the same and it doesn't have to be made by the rules always. So pixie cut is something that should be like playful, it can be softer, it can be stronger, like it can be anything you want. So this is like a really creative haircut that you can do. Um, so it just needs to suit the customer, so it doesn't, it always depends like on the customer that you have, on the type of the hair but it, you can always do it like on almost anybody. Questions coming in if you're gonna save the live? Am I gonna save the live? Mm -hmm. Yes, I will. I hope I will. Don't forget to press save. <laughs> Sometimes it happened that I forgot, but I will save the live and uh, if it's good, I'm gonna post it on my YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. 
okay, so now it looks much better because I don't want to look it, uh, to look, for the haircut to look like too old and not fashionable. So these are the details that, that they're actually making the difference in the haircuts. You know, because most of the haircuts that I do, they're just like basic standard haircuts and you, I just made, I just personalize them um, with that special details. So, because there isn't many haircutting techniques, there are, there are like just some few basic techniques and everything else is just like a combination of the basic techniques. And, and of course the stability is always important, you just have to adjust it according to the customer that is sitting in your chair. When doing the, the slicing, um, you should be also be careful. It's good to have the scissors for it. I don't have the right scissors for the slicing, so it's a little bit harder uh, because I have to like all the time do that with my fingers. But it will always help you to keep the a little bit softer shape and it will help you to um, make a little bit more flat a final look of the haircut. Okay, I think I'm finished with this part. So that, as you can see, I have this rounded shape that I wanted to create and a little bit easier on the back. So in the beginning, it was like too heavy. So I just changed the approach, changed the technique in the back and uh, I'm finished with that. And now when I take the top part, actually it doesn't matter on which side I'm gonna do it. So you can do it on the both sides. So even if it stays longer, it will still look good. So this is like the advantage when you're doing the pixie cuts. If the base is good, if the base is created good, you can do anything with the, with the top. But for now it's a little bit too long, so I'm gonna make it shorter anyway. I'm just gonna leave it, leave the hair that it falls naturally as much as it can be on the wall maybe like a little bit diagonal parting on one side and let's see the back okay so now i will start on the top in the middle so i will just make the section across uh, the head from ear to ear And I will connect it with the bottom. So I, I'll, I'll actually leave everything a little bit longer so it won't be that much of a disconnection. And now what I'm gonna do, so this is this will work every time when you have like a really strong curl pick. So if the hair jumps, you just create this V-shape, triangular shape. And when you dry this part, again, continue the same way as you did it as I did it before. So I just take diagonal sections and I over direct them like really strongly on the side. So here I have to find my section from the below. Again, I'm doing the circular loops. I go around the head and I just connect it with it. Again, diagonal section and I take all the hair towards the sides. And I do the same on the other side. So the diagonal. Really strongly on the side. So I also stay with my body on the side. I don't go in the back. So the diagonal. And I over direct everything towards me. So this is how you will keep the middle part, so the, the crown part longer, and you will avoid um, that the hair jumps too much. 
So you just brush it from one side to the other. And even if the hair is curly, so this actually can look really good on the curly hair. You know, you, can, you will have like a lot of volume, even if this stays straight. So this can, look, this can look really nice on the curly hair too. So this is the haircut that will work both even on the straight hair, um, on the curly hair, even on the thick hair or on the fine hair. And now, so I will leave the side parting like it is here. And I will take vertical section on the top, and go from the side. And I will connect it with the back. So this is the part where will this connection happen. So I just connect this part with the back, but it will be much longer than uh, the sides because then I will have like a nice rounded shape, but all the hair will be much flatter because of these shorter parts on the side. So everything goes to the back. At one moment, probably, I won't have any hair to cut anymore because this looks already short. So this is something that you also adjust depending on the customer's length and of course according to the desired length of the haircut. So just over direct everything towards back. So the more, I, the more hair I take from the front, the less hair I actually have to cut. Because this is the way how I keep it longer on the front. And with this, I created the triangular shape, which will connect with this part and it will look much, much softer. So even if this gets curly or even if it stays straight, it will look quite good. And also I will do it on the other side. So I have a side parting, which I will keep. I also take the vertical sections and I over direct them towards back. So I always look for the less section, for my longest section in the back. This I can take everything because I don't have much hair to cut. Okay, so I finished with the haircut now. I will dry it and then I will make the everything. I will personalize everything when the hair is dry. So if you have any other questions or you can also write me like do you want me to do live again? Maybe which haircut you would, you would like to see? Because for the next week I can work on models, so I can do it on the live head too. Or if you want to see the coloring, so just write down while I'm driving. And my colleague will read it to me.
see. So as you can see, I just dry the hair like on every way, um, like on every part of the head, because when you have a short hair, like this medium short hair, then you have to, it's easier to dry it and then you will easier see how and where the hair actually falls. So what I want to do, I want to make the, this fringe a little bit more shorter because I still think they are too long. And I will make everything softer. But first, I just want to make it a little bit more uh, straight. So I don't want to change like the shape of the how I dry the hair. I just want to make it a little bit more smoother. And this is also what you can do uh, on a real hair. I usually do that just because I can finish the haircut. You know, especially if you have to do the thinning, uh, because if the hand, if the ends are getting curly, then you can't go with your hair, with your scissors in the ends. So that's why I'm using the straightening bar. But you don't have to be like too rough or do it too straight. Now I'm just changing the size, the sides a little bit, uh, because anyway, if you have a short hair, you can always flip it from one side to the other. If you want to have the soft haircut, the, it should work on the both sides. So even if you do the thinning, you can always uh, manage it like that. Like do it on the both sides, check how it looks on the left or on the right. This is the usual haircut that I like to leave curly or just make it like a little texturized because it's really playful haircut and it shouldn't be like too strong, too soft or even too perfect. So first I'm going to do the fringe because like I said they're a little bit too long. And this is the way how you can do it. Like, if you don't want to change too much of the shape, but if the customers say it's a little bit too long, so what you can do, just take like the triangular section on the front, on the sides, put the hair behind the ear if the customer has ears, <laughs> not like the doll, and you just do the, the diagonal section on the side and just remove this length. So now I take everything towards other side. So the right side is the one that is longer and I over direct everything there. So it will nicely around her face, like it will go around her face. Okay, and I will just make everything more and more finer, like just thin it with a point cut. And I'm also following the head shape, the, the cut shape that I created. So every time when you do the point cut, you should always make the sections. You shouldn't uh, just take the hair ev everywhere you see it. Always follow the shape. Because the point cut is something that will just help you make the entire haircut like look softer. And it's not something that you use for actual haircut look.
So again, I just move around the, the head from the front and I just check how everything falls. And also I will do the point cut in the back, so we'll just connect this part that I took previously and over direct it towards back. So this is how you actually keep the length on the crown part and you just change the shape from the rounded shape which is under to a little bit more fashionable shape on the front which is more triangular. important that we don't exaggerate with the point cutting because we don't want to destroy the shape that we created. So what I'm going to do, because I want to connect the top part and the side part. Because usually if you make the party and if you cut uh, according to the party, you will always have like a difference where it's longer and it's shorter. So what I usually do, I just take all the hair from the one side towards the other. And I just connect it. So from the ear, I will just create a nice shape, just to avoid that I have like one longer piece of the hair on the other side. So it doesn't matter how the hair falls on your customer. So if you put it on the left side or on the right side, it will always be much more clear. And you can always just keep it softer because today I don't want to create stronger shapes like geometrical. I want everything to be soft. And I will do the same on the dog, on the other side. So I just took all the I just take all the hair from the other side. I got a really really cool comment a few days ago. I did a haircut like that, which is like a little bit longer fringe. And someone said like, you just biberized her, but in a good way. <laughs> so if I just look in the mirror and see, yeah, this is like a Justin Bieber haircut. <laughs> so it was a funny comment, but it was actually good. We have a question. Yes. What is the purpose of point cutting? To make the edges softer, especially if you have like a strong hair or like a doll's hair. Um, because it grows everywhere so if you want to avoid that strong line on the ends you just make it to make it the, the ends a little bit softer so that's why you don't go too deep you just take the hair and go, go like maybe one centimeter in the hair shape uh, just to make everything a little bit softer so especially if the hair is wavy it will always look better because if the hair is wavy and if you don't do the point cut you will probably see like strong lines somewhere and you want to blend the ends in the hair. You want all the hair to be blended, so that this is why you do the point cut. And that's also the reason why you do it on the dry hair, um, because when the hair is dry, you can see the finished result and you create um, like that final, um, like personalized touch on, the, on every haircut that you do. It's not necessary to do it anywhere, but you have to adjust it and you have to see if it's suitable for your customer. So now I will just go across the head to connect the, the parting. And if I still have something that's a little bit like disconnected, I will just do it with the point cut. Okay, 
so think I'm done. So this is actually like uh, between the bob and the pixie haircut because it's the, the shape reminds of the bob but it's actually much more shorter than the bob usually is. Um, so I call this kind of a haircut boxing. It's like combination of bob and the <laughs> pixie haircut. And of course this can always be uh, much much shorter. So just to repeat everything a little bit uh, one more time. So I started with the sectioning on the parietal bone which, which went into the V shape in the back below the crown. So this is like the basic shape that you can do on almost every short haircut that you do. So even if you go like really short with scissors over the comb, like if you want to remove all the hair from the below, you can do the same, um, the same sectioning. Because the parietal bone is like your barrier where the hair should uh, split, like which hair grows towards up and which hair grows towards down. And then you just uh, adjust the length that you want for your customer. So today I did like much, much softer haircut. So usually I have like really stronger hair haircuts on the, my YouTube channel. They're always like clean, strong, like always with, almost always with the uh, undercut, like classic undercut and with um, scissors over comb. And today I did like a little bit more classic uh, shape just because I wanted to explain how it works. But if you go to my channel and if you see all the playlists, like especially the Pixie playlist, you will see um, the sim similarity in the sectioning and um, yeah, in the parting and in everything. So this is it for today. <laughs> um, so today, I, I actually, this is the first time that I created a short shortcut on the doll. And uh, actually, I can't wait to do it on the real head because it's much more different because the doll head, it's not always per head because you don't have that nice hair growth to just pose everything onto the face. But I hope that you got that you got like other information that I usually don't give in my video. In my videos, so if if you would like to um, if, if you would like to see more often li live videos, just please um, leave a comment, tell me what you would like to see, uh, and also follow me on Instagram. There we can also connect. So you just write down my name, and you will find uh, me on Instagram, and uh, you can send me a message there if you want to know something else about the haircuts or of the colors that I'm working with. Um, so guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for celebrating my birthday with me. Thank you for all the good wish wishes. I will read the comments one more and I will save the live before I finish. Uh, so I hope you have a good time. Please uh, take care of yourself. Uh, uh, good, life, good luck with the quarantine, but I know that a lot of people are, will start work soon. So I hope that, um, that you start work as soon as possible because we all need it. So thank you for today, for everything, and see you again soon. Bye.